What's up, everyone? Uh, some of you may know me, some of you may not, but I like to do free lessons and supply free uh, sheet music, tablature, and whatnot to the community because, you know, I want to share and give back. And uh, someone uh, donated to me uh, the other day, I believe his name is Mark Brown or something, and when people donate to me, since I do this all for free, I like to take the recommendations and uh, put them next up. Because there's, you know, there's just so much that you could cover, you know. So many songs, so many era, eras. Today I uh, tried to print out, there's a Jerry Garcia fake book. And the ninth version has like, it's like the jazz real books, you know. Uh, that have just like almost, you know, all the standard tunes. And uh, so... I, I don't even know why I brought that up, but check that out. It's a Jerry Garcia fake book version 9. There's a PDF, and uh, it'd be a cool thing to uh, bind and put together. Hey, Kyle, can you comment on this so I can see if the comments are working now? It's just not letting me view comments on these things. Well, you know what? If there's no comments this time, I'm going to roll with it, but... Please understand anyone watching this during or after. My whole thing lately has been that I can't see the comments as they pop up. And that kind of defeats the point of, like, interacting live. So, uh, sorry if I can't respond to your questions like a live feed should be. I grabbed my mom's phone, actually. I thought it was maybe just my phone, but it must be, like, just my account. But, uh, let's talk about estimated profit. So, main riff. That's our main, main riff, right? So, uh, I'm going to probably be all over the place with this, but, uh, like the bears behind me, it's become kind of my signature thing. Um, I have a, uh, let's see if I can get this going here. This is my envelope filter, and, uh, I didn't really tweak the settings much. Uh, it's been on my pedal board for a while. I've been playing clean since I play a lot of jazz, but I got this out. And apparently the Qtrons, Qtron Plus I have is the same schematics as Jerry's envelope filter when it, like, when he had a pedal. You know, I don't know much about gear. I admit my ignorance with things I don't know about much about, but he eventually obviously had an onboard envelope filter switch on his guitar, but I'm pretty sure this... Qtron Plus is the same schematic, same wiring, same pedal as the old Mutrons, but at a much, uh, the price tag's a lot lower. So, uh, uh, there's a St. Stephen I'm going to link below from January of, uh, I can't remember when, it's January something, and it's just Jerry for like three or four minutes, whatever, before St. Stephen, just proving that he's an envelope filter pro. Because these envelope filter pedals, it's essential to the, the timbre of the guitar and estimated profit. And it's such a pedal that's sensitive to how you, uh, how you dynamically play. You don't, it's not like a pedal you just turn on and it sounds good. It's like a phaser, it just does its thing. No, you have to really be sensitive with these things. And Jerry's a pro at that, because if you if you pick lighter, I think, it depends on which way you have it sweeping, but if you pick lighter, it's more bassy. Then you pick heavier, it starts to give you that quack. I used to think my pedal was busted, because it took me so long to, to learn how to, to use it properly, but definitely check those out if you want to get a good envelope filter sound. I'm pretty sure it's the same schematics as Jerry's and Mutron, but... I don't know. I don't I don't know for sure. It sounds cool to me. And if you want to see my settings real quick, I mean I'm changing them around all but uh So there's the uh I keep it on mix. Let me see if I can get this clearer. Sorry guys, it's gonna I keep it on mix, that's low pass, band pass, high pass. I like mix because that's just uh, you know, your range of frequencies and I like slow. I like uh low you know, you just kind of got to mess with it, you know. But uh, the sweep's going up. That's what I was talking about. That's how Jerry has the lot is going up, not down. <laughs> like how I moved the phone with that. But uh, let's get into, like, the actual, like, a, a lesson of, like, estimated profit. So, uh, 
First riff. Well, first thing I should say is the song is in 7-4 time signature for, if I recall correctly. My band covered it a while ago, so I had to refresh tonight when someone donated and wanted to hear this. But uh, it's, for the most part, in 7-4 time, so you can hear some versions. I was just listening to 528-77. Of course, the February 77 versions are great. My favorite, I think, is 513-77. But you can hear... Uh, Make your uh, Billy count off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we're in F sharp minor, and this guitar, excuse me, I've been using my uh, Ibanez ES335 shape guitar for a while, so this one's going out of tune a lot, so forgive me if it goes out of tune. Uh, someone accused me on another video, one of the only negative comments I've got is like that I was out, out of tune. But you gotta remember, when you're playing along with these dead dates and whatnot, if the tape is sped up or slowed down, the anytime something's sped up or slowed down, the pitch is slightly altered, and you don't even know if they were in a, you know, 440 standard always, but whatever, that's besides the point. So, this whole riff is out of F sharp. The whole thing is F sharp minor pentatonic actually, so we don't even need to, to tap into the full F sharp uh, minor slash, it's the Aeolian mode. So Aeolian mode is, people that don't know about modes, they're so easy, um, you gotta look at it your own way, but Aeolian means minor. Dorian, which is used a lot, the only difference is one note, so here's F sharp uh, minor like we're doing in this song. The only note that changes for Dorian mode is the, is the six is major instead of minor. But here, for the beginning, we have pentatonics. Two, five on the low E. So that's F sharp, A, the uh, root. It's almost like we're beginning the arpeggio of an F sharp minor chord. Root, two, five, two, four, so two, five. You know, honestly, since I go to school for jazz guitar, it's really hard for me to, to like, I don't want to say step down. I still use tabs, but, you know, a lot of my viewers are beginners, and um, you got to know the notes. Print out, look up online, print out, like, notes of the fretboard and just memorize it, because I don't want to always have to be, like, two, five, you should know F sharp, A. I hope I didn't sound like kind of condescending there, but it's just a good thing to work on that's not like learning a song or something. So we have two, five, on the low E, and then on the A, two, four. And this part's cool with a string skip. We have G. It kind of is like a motif where it repeats two on the G, four on the uh, D, and then same thing on the A, or the D and the A. So beginning two, five, A string, two, four, and then G, two, four on the D, and then same thing, two on the D, four on the A. So you can see how they re relate. And then you hit four, an F sharp note, octave of what we started on. From the B, uh, we, we hit that after that, and then two Bs, which is two, second fret of the A string. And then the minor third leads us back down. So. So one more time. Two, five, two, two, four. Two, four, two, four, four, two, two, five. Maybe I can get a different angle where you can see my hand real nicely, too. It's hard. Cool, so that's all pentatonic. But penta, obviously, prefix for five, five note scale. And if you're just now tuning in, I'll have to say it again. I can't see any comments now. My live's all messed up. So I'll respond after. I really wish I could interact with you guys during the feed. But uh, this will have to do for now. Um, so that's the intro riff. And Bobby's just playing F sharp minor. Two, four, two, four. 
And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three. Well, it's hard to count alongside it, but it's in seven, four, and you can, like I said, you can literally hear them count off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And jazz, sometimes we think about it as a measure of four, four, a measure of three, four. I just think about it as seven, four, you know, don't, whatever's natural, you know. And then, so the, the uh, uh, verses after the intro riff. <laughs> We just hold out an F sharp. This one I get count and play. One F sharp minor. So you know this bar chord. Two, four, four, two, two. Or you can do a minor seven. Any of those, but Bobby kinda does that part. Um so so we hold the first chord out for like a full seven four measure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So that does that reggae thing on the second measure. You can either go down, up. I don't know what I do. Sometimes when I think about how I pick it, it it throws me off from what I naturally do. So I go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that reggae thing, second measure, and then I listen like to us, like I said, to five thirteen a lot, cause uh, May seventy seven is my favorite. I do need to branch out. I'm uh, binging a little bit too hard, but sorry, it's just May seventy seven. They're so good. So you can hear that a lot, and that's what proves to you that they're not in Dorian or anything. I think they might jam in Dorian later. I haven't analyzed the outro solos Jerry does a lot on them, but yeah, he probably switches switches the Dorian and the outro. And remember, it's just one note different from Aeolian, which is just your minor scale. But you can hear that note in the verse, a D, which is the uh, minor six of the key of F sharp minor. So. So I like to do that after that little reggae thing. Keep an F sharp chord. You kind of need to, uh, like, well, I like to play F sharps a lot with just leaving this out. And, you know, Bobby does that sometimes because the bass player's got this covered, man. Like, guitarists, we really don't even need to hit the fifth or the unison or the root note. That's a, more of a jazz thing, but Bobby's really conscious of his chords. So that last, last little beat, we can hammer on to D, the third fret of the B string, so. My time coming, any day, don't worry. And then, so for that last thing, just switch from a bar chord to. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sorry, it's hard to count and do it, but that's what it is. And now let's get back to Jerry and uh, when well, I think Bobby does those parts and Jerry just holds out a chord. But obviously they've done so many versions. I'm talking about five, thirteen, seven, eight, seven. What I've listened to the most. Um, but it's not on YouTube. So tonight, to I haven't played the song since my band covered it a while ago. So I've been uh, listening to what's on YouTube. Uh, five twenty-eight. Uh, what's the other one that's on here? I'm not, I was going to play it, but last time I update, up, uploaded to YouTube and played it, I got a Korean company frauded my Ramble on Rose solo. Uh, if you don't know, I'm in a, I started a group called Dedicated Jams, and there's a YouTube, and I provide free lessons and tabs, and donate if you want. Um, I actually, I plan to, I've gotten a lot of donations since I set the donation thing up the other day, and if you donate, you know, I'll give you private lessons, do whatever song you want, but yeah, I was listening to 5.8, of course, Cornell, and uh, 5.28, but I like the February ones a lot, I get distracted, guys, but, uh, <laughs> so, the verse, don't worry about <clears throat> me now, right? So what is that? That is Jerry on F sharp, our root of the song, of the scale. And then he's hitting 
open it's just a rhythm that's with the second fret of the low E and open the walk up is 0 to 4 on the A string which is A B C sharp So that one you just kind of have to get, the notes aren't complicated, it's just 2 and 0. And uh, message me, or I'll have tabs of this soon, Jay Darks is the man. He has a very cool uh, way of uh, interpreting the song. I looked at his a lot uh, when I learned it back with my band. Usually I do things by ear, but you can't always do that. You need to tap into resources and other people sometimes because I don't have time to learn every song I want to learn by ear. You know, but it's good to work that year. I do it every day, so. This is my favorite part. So let's talk about the chords first. I'll turn off the envelope filter. And the 7-4 in the chorus. And that's where Jerry solos later. California. So we're in seven four still here, and let me let me help you guys count it and think about it. We we change from F sharp minor or F sharp Aeolian to G mixolydian. And if you don't know much about modes, G mixolydian is your G major scale with just flatting the seven. So you get those chords. The same way that Hey Jude, Dear Mr. Fantasy, mixolydian. Because that that second chord isn't in your uh, normal major. It's usually this. Uh, let's see. So it's a little bit different. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two. G, C, G, F, C, G, C, G, F. Practice uh, counting out loud while you do it. That's what helped me a lot. It's hard to do with the leads, obviously, like I couldn't do with the intro, but with the chords like that. So we just have G, C, and F. And if you want me to talk about Bobby for a little bit, what would he probably do? Well, we know that Bobby loves these voicings. So maybe like... Um, and I'm out of tune again, like I said I would be. I haven't used this guitar in a while. I have uh, just normal strings on here. My Ibanez as I usually teach with is a semi hollow body ES335. They're kind of like I actually I heard Gibson like maybe sued them or something because it was so similar, which is cool for me. I basically have a Gibson ES335 for much less money. But uh, I have flat wound strings on there, so it's harder to bend, and I really shouldn't bend, but I bend. I bend on them. It's really hard. I think how it is with a lot of flat wound strings is the first four bottom strings are flat wound and the top E and B are just the thicker gauge but they're steel, they're steel strings so chorus one two three four so you do G for six and then on the seventh you hit the C so I'm just doing bar chords but for some beginners so G these are the chords I'm playing C G F probably what Jerry would have played and Bobby up here for G. What Bobby's doing is taking this C major chord and uh, <clears throat> moving it all the way up here. But of course it doesn't look like the same chord, right? Because we have two open strings on that, so we have to compensate when we move up and bar, as if we're using a cape or something. So maybe Bobby would go like... But uh, when I play Jerry's parts, I like to go 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, the first to count it, G for six beats, and on the seventh measure of this seventh four measure, you hit the C, and then back down to G, and then on the four, you hit F, and on the six, you hit C. To the people just joining, I have to keep saying it, but my comments from you guys are not showing up. I tried to get a new phone. It must be my Facebook. I'm sorry I can't interact or answer questions, but uh, hopefully everyone's enjoying the lesson. Um, so this is how I got it down really nicely. And another good way to get it down is if you just freaking love the song and listen to it all the time. You, you know what this, I mean, like, California. That's like everybody wants to light up a dude when they hear that chorus. Come on now. So, so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you see what I'm saying? So, G for six beats, on the seventh, C, then G, two, three, on the fourth, F for four and five, six, seven beats for the C. Now, let's talk about what Jerry does with that. Um... See, this is one of the things I in <clears throat> interpreted differently than Jay Darks. And Jay Darks has done so much for the deck community, doing the same thing I am, uh, giving away, like, the free tablature and whatnot. I just do it because I love it, honestly. I have homework I should be doing right now. I should be figuring out how I'm going to fix the car I crashed the other day. But I think the best way to live life is follow your highest excitement and, and joy. And right now it's for me to... Uh, teach you guys this and someone donated 20 10 bucks to me and they wanted to hear this song so i'm gonna give them this song um so um, so if you want to do it with open chords if you're that much of a beginner man that sounds really bad but like honestly if you if you can't play bar chords yet one two three four five six seven one two three four five six you're going to have to play a bar chord for the F, so uh, if you can't do that, get on your bar chords. Envelope filter back on. Jerry's uh, licks. And remember, like, this is, uh, it's always different. You know, I'm going based off the 513 77 take I like. Basically, I got the May 77 box set, and I just binge it hard because I don't have an aux cable in my car. So I... <laughs> Burn tons and tons of CDs and random dead shows, but I'm just stuck in the 70s and late 60s. I haven't listened to enough 80s, uh, 90s dead, just to be completely honest. So I need you guys to help me out with show recommendations. So, um, so Jerry, his fills are like, man, I really want to play it on my phone to really show you guys. And you know what? I'm just gonna do it, but like. That's what they, they claim copyright on my YouTube videos. And not that, that I got a Korean, random Korean company. Uh, um, uh, they copyrighted my Ramble on Rose, which is just me playing the solo alongside of it. And they said they chose the option of don't remove the video, but they're, they're going to monetize it. So I do this all for free, and that's cool and all, but I'll take YouTube's money. I don't want to take my family's money. YouTube and Google, give me your money, please. Whatever. It's not even about money. I sound bad there, but basically, the, some fraud Korean company, uh, if I play this, they're going to probably, and I upload this to YouTube, they're probably going to, like, you know, I'll fight it, though, because, you know, the dad's not about that. There's, like, a quote, you know, like, they said something about, like, when we're done with the show, people can have it. Whatever. So, um, let me see if I can get this going, um, to play for you. Five, I'll do 528. <laughs> Man, sorry guys, I screwed that last one up.
That one's hard to get. So it's just a hammer on to D. That's all I wanted you guys to hear. Um, hopefully this video doesn't get copyrighted. If the dad claimed copyright, it's totally cool. Anything with them. But if some fake Korean company is trying to make money off my videos, that's actually pretty funny. I, I, I laugh. That's cool. Just take it. You know, I'm in this for the music and the connection and the family and the people. And uh, But yeah, this is... Uh, I went off, this is one I didn't do by ear, and like I said, I I learned it with my band like maybe a year or two ago, and uh, I went off J-Dark's tab, which I can link, but uh, I disagree with, no, I don't disagree, I have a different perspective of uh, how Jerry plays certain things, or maybe, you know, maybe he's listening to different live versions, but his tabs are all text, and what I'm trying to supply you guys with is tablature, and sheet music so you can look at either and you can see rhythms and everything because when I see tabs and there's no rhythm like you know how you know it could be like I could see this how do I know how if I didn't know the song how do I know how long or the, the live take how do I know it's not like it could be any timing that's why I like to add the sheet music to it but his choruses are a little bit different he says to do which is similar to what I came up with, but I think in the version I love in May 77, Jerry does these, uh, so it's like a G chord. Think about it. If we have a G chord down here open, these three strings are open for G, right? That means if we go to the 12th fret, where the octave begins again, it's the next octave, 12th fret, we have a G chord. It's an inversion the way I'm playing it. It's D, G, B but it's still a G triad, G chord. So we're going to leave out that middle note. We're going to play 12 on the D string and 12 on the B string. So Jerry's very conscious of the chords he plays over and writes over, and that proves it. Me and my guitar professor, Chuck, uh, he's like my mentor at school since I go to school for jazz guitar, jazz studies. He was talking to me about how Trey and Jerry learned and were brought up uh, differently. Jerry was just kind of into the jug band, bluegrass stuff, and he just kind of like learned it, you know, very like old school, like blues on the street. And Trey is kind of like me where I have a formal ed music education. I mean, it doesn't matter what route you take to get there and where are we really even going. I just want to... Uh, connect with people you know and this is my favorite way to do it so we're gonna slide up to that G so remember we have 12 on the D and 12 on the B and this is like technically it's not a chord it comes with a G chord but for a chord we need at least three notes or it's just an interval so we have D because remember 12 and 0 are octaves so it's like the D string D and B so what is D and B? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So that's a six interval. So we're playing six interval out of the, uh, like an inversion of a G major chord. Then you go down two step, two frets, a whole step, to the tenth fret. So, slide into the twelve. Doesn't matter where you slide in. I like 11 because Jerry loves chromaticism instead of, this is a little bit more standard, but uh, do whatever you want. Into 12, down to 10, so what chord is that? If that one was a G, right, when we go down a whole step, we have F sharp, 
G flat in the middle, so this is an F with the six intervals. So slide into the, the G chord triad or interval. Sorry. Just go bring that down two frets, the tenth fret, and the last one nine on the D. So these are all in the D and the G and the B strings, and I like to kind of put my pick in my hand here, so like. Um, I don't know what Jerry does. Oh yeah, you can also do it. I might do it either way. You can also just, if you are going to play it with a pick, to not hit this middle string, this G string, just block it out with this finger. Intentionally. So we do that, those 12s. 10s, and then 9 on the D, 8 on the B. So what is that? Let's see, we have a B, and we have a G. Cool. I don't, I, I don't really want to theoretically analyze that right now, but if we were going to A, B, C, D. Oh, wait, let's see here. Did I have that right? Or G, B, C, D. Another six, so these are all six intervals coming from the G major, G mixolydian scale, sorry. So, so get these down. 12 and 12, 10 and 10, 9 and 8. So, and this is how I do it. The first time I like to play it, like the first lick he does... Just go down. And on the second time. Oh, I gotta turn it back on. It's hard to recall without listening to it. I'll show you guys. But I break it down into four parts with two parts really. Something. <laughs> Look at me. I'm a joke. But the, it repeats. There's. It's a four part thing, but there's only two different kind of variations you can play off of with those six intervals. Okay. So watch. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna ignore the chords that I already showed you and go up here. And the part later on where it continues and they harmonize, you will not believe me. It's the same chorus riff, but Jerry doesn't do those. Uh, so like I said, like for example, J Dark's interpretation was, uh, you can do that if you like. I hear. So. It's so hard to play with without uh, the recording, but basically the first one is 12, 10, 9, 8, and then slide again, slide down, and just know those two parts, and that's what I was saying is a four part thing, because those two parts repeat. So, Cal. And then those parts are key. So part, learn these two variations. One. And remember, you can use a pick if you can mute that middle string. Or I like to use my fingers sometimes. That one's tricky. I almost try to do it all in one, which means I only pick once, like, pick one. So, starting on the 10, slide to the 12 one, back down, 10, 
then the 9 and 8, all in one, like a swift uh, legato thing. And then 10. Oh yeah, so that's a G chord. I see now. We had, that's where that, that comes from. A Bobby voicing of the, uh, it's like the cage system of guitar using the C chord and bringing it up, so. California, to do the chords in between I'm pretty sure Jerry doesn't Bobby just covers the chords there and Jerry has the uh so just listen for variation so one last time variation one 12 slide into 10 and if you're just tuning in these are just D and B string Use your pick, use your fingers. I'm doing these two fingers. Sorry, guys, I had to. <laughs> okay, so now what's next? So we have the chorus, and like I said, um, the second chorus, he goes into, You would not believe. Ooh. There's no fills there in the versions I listen to. Um, I, I'm just going off 513 if you want to know where I like I'm getting this all from. 513, um, I guess I'm not a dad head if I can't tell you the venue it was at, but it's my favorite version. So then it goes back into those. Then what happens later, the most, this is when the dad started to get really progressive rock. I hate to be all genre on it, but you have to be, like, they get out there, help on the way, slipknot. To me, this is the, the section that bridges from, uh, the, uh, they modulate to D minor, and then they have this crazy minor third modulating part. That's very slipknot esque, but without the diminished chords. And then Jerry's solo, like. So, um, when he, you know, I'll call down thunder and speak my name. Our chords here are. Well, did I go over the chords for the last one? Actually. Um. Oh yeah, so the don't worry about me now part is just a vamp, which means it just stays on F sharp minor. Off pentatonic scale, or you could do A, B, F, A, F, not an F, not an F, A, C sharp. Cool. So then... And I'll call out thunder and speak. I can't do Bobby vocals, but when they go up, uh, I'll call down thunder and speak the same. And my work fills the sky with flame. When they start to get real intense, it's the same thing as. But they modulate up to. We're not in F sharp minor now, we're in D minor. That's another thing, learning. Like Bobby, that's what Bobby would do. Okay, I have a D minor here. I have a D minor here. I can play it like this. 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 I could play it like. You know? Don't just always go for the bar chords, but so like. It just modulates up to that and does a very similar riff as the don't worry about me now. That almost follows the vocal melody, right? So, uh, and once again, I'm sorry to say it so many times, but if there's new people that joined, I can't see comments right now. My Facebook's messed up. I see who's joining. I don't see comments, but, uh, and it kind of sucks, but, uh, because I can't interact. That's why I do the live videos, so I can interact with people. But for the next part...
Let's go one part at a time though. That's where they get super progressive and like help on the way Slipknot type stuff. Um, so, D the chords instead of just F sharp minor like earlier we have I'll call down thunder and speak the same. D minor to E7, E down in 7. And my work fills the sky with flames. So it's just D minor 7, E7, three times. And we're gonna, then gonna light my way. Then it goes to an F. But we still didn't cover Jerry's part on that. So Jerry thinks, Jerry's probably thinking, okay, we got a D minor, and we got an E7. Let's start on the root of D minor and do a, a motif. What a motif is, is an idea that like, well, in an interview, Jerry said he learns the vocal melodies of the tune he's playing, and that's what he solos based off of. You can hear it a lot in, like, Bertha and stuff. So he did the same thing kind of here, but in a compositional way. Because how much does that match the vocals? Don't worry about me now. So you can tell Jerry is very conscious of the vocal melody. And uh, so I, I'll call down thunder and speak the same. Five three five, just like two zero two, but now five three five on the A string, which is D C D. I did I did harmonic minor there. So then does a walk down. Either open or fifth fret of the A string. Because they're the same note, right? A, open A, A. I think I kind of like to play this one. It's all preference. 5, 5, 3, 5, 3, 5, 5, 3, 2, 5 on the low E. Then we go, he, Jerry goes, oh, I'm playing over an E7 chord. So let's start out, go up to the E. Same thing, another motif. The motif is this. So, don't worry about me now. He does that in three dip, over three different chords in the song. That's what a motif is. Same rhythm, different harmony harmonic and melodic uh, qualities to it so that that one's easy so remember slide in five five three five three five five three five three two five it just walks down the uh, d minor scale d a only and whatever you want to think about it and then Seven, seven, five, seven, five, seven. And the second time it repeats, I like to hit this note. Fourteen on the uh, A string, so like. Right here. Rush. Now let me see if I can play that along with the song. That means, I don't know, I was going to say something negative, but positivity, right? All my chakras are aligned, in case you guys are worried, they're all aligned. But I'm not digging your guys' auras right now, I'll be real with you. My aura is like every color, because I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being sarcastic. So let's see, let's wait for that part a little bit. Recap. Hammer on, remember? 
I'm telling you, same progression as the chorus, no Jerry Lee's. Oh, he does arpeggios, never mind. In arpeggios, you just play one note of the chord at a time. Here we go. Oh, this part's in 4-4, four, four, actually. So let's go over that part now. Okay, um... So... That's the part I sang in the beginning that I don't know if it's all in 7-4 because I, I just picked this song up five minutes again after probably a year since I've played it to do this lesson. But uh, I love this song so much. I studied it really hard when I did go over it a year ago. So it's coming back to me really quick. I just wish I could get the YouTube version of the my favorite version to show you guys. But uh, So that part switches to 4-4. Four, four, so no more counting to 7 which is genius. I don't have to tell you guys that the Grateful Dead is a uh, genius, but uh, when you go to the D part, I call down thunder and speak the same. We're in 4-4 four, four now. Did I put up three fingers? Okay, so uh, I remember you can just play open A to keep it all on the same string. That makes it simple, but I hit that A. Second time, going on the third time. And then the last time, F instead of the E7. So remember, we went the chords during that are. Speak the same. My clothes is kind of flames. Night glory gonna be my name. But then the fourth time, the men gonna light the way. So now we have the crazy prog part that I didn't even know if I was gonna cover tonight. But I have 13 viewers, so check it out. Here, here are the chords if you're playing Bobby's part. <laughs> picture um is let me think of what time signature this progressive part is um it's in seven four again seven four so how do you do that one think of it remember earlier i said you can think i usually just count one two three four five six seven we can break it into three and four to make that part a lot more simple and it has that feel the the rest of the song to me just feels like count to seven. This I go one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Same thing as seven, four, different interpretation. Because I think about it that way, because three Fs, one, two, three, then four A's. So Bobby's chords, F, two. So the whole pattern is three of the first chord. Four of the second one for seven four, and then it does that for every set of two chords. So F 
A, B minor, D minor, A minor, C minor, G minor, B flat minor, sorry, F minor. This part's tricky. I always just ball this part, honestly. It's the. It basically just climbs back up to the G major. So, what I like to do is. We end on an F minor. That's where our minor third modulation thing ends us, is F minor. Then. You can add that note on. So, we're playing an F minor. 3, 1, 1, 1, 1. D3, and 1 on the rest of the strings. But we add, kind of like how we did earlier with, with the verses, but now, so we have an F minor chord, but now we're adding the uh, sharp 5 in there. But you can look at it so many days, when you get into theory, then you also realize that this is a uh, D flat chord. The notes... There's so many ways to name and look at chords. So yeah, this may be like a D flat triad chord, but it's actually F minor almost with like a flatted six sharp five. It goes to show you how many ways there are to look at it. And look at this. And then you add your pinky on. And now I can look at that as F six, like a funky thing. F minor six. But what is F minor six? It's basically a B flat seven if we were to add the B bass note. So there's so many ways that you can reharmonize and look at chords. But this is how I would play it. So remember, three, one, one, one. And we're going up on the B string. Two, on the B string. And you can keep that finger down, then three. So we have three, one, two, one, three, one, three, one. And that's really hard to solo over in 7-4, so it, it, one thing I like about it being in 7-4 is, okay, there's some math rock bands, and there's, music is all, no, there's no wrong music, and even with theory, I sound like a theory nerd, I might sit at home and practice theory, but it's also, I can engrave it in my mind, so when I jam and improvise, that it just comes out fluently, you know? So it's like half think way too much about something that's like very like creative. And then live when I'm playing, I know all these things I practice and I don't have to think at all. I just let it flow. Let my inspiration flow. But okay, so, uh, so how does Jerry do that lead there? I, this is going to be the hard, he plays it differently all the time, but I'll show you a cool way to like start learning it. So remember our chords are the first two chords. We're going to divide this into five sections, this transition. F, A, a little too close. F, A, so F for three. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. So Jerry would go. Did I not tell you he's conscious of chord changes? Bluegrass is a genre and that kind of thing, which is his background. They really make sure to hit. So what is being conscious of chord changes? You have a pentatonic scale and you're playing over chords. It sounds cool, right? Sometimes it sounds cooler if you know I'm going this. My rhythm guitarist is going to this chord. What's like a powerful note in the chord to hit? And usually it's never uh, the root or the fifth. The third is like a very powerful note to to land on if you're soloing because may speaking major and minor triads F F minor. Only thing that changes is the third. That's why it's called the perfect fifth. So that's the most powerful note to land on. If we land on the root of the fifth, it sounds fine, but so Jerry's arpeggiating the F and the A. How can we arpeggiate? What's an F chord? If you don't know how to find chords in a key signature, and don't think about this part in a key signature because it modulates, which means it goes all over the place. 
So we can arpeggiate F. This is how you figure out triads and arpeggios in the key. F, skip a letter, so we skip G. Then we have A, because there's no H in music. Skip a letter, C. That's how you find major minor chords or any triad in the key. First note, skip a note. Third note, skip a note. Fifth note. So for F, we have F, A, C. I think about it as face, because I'm going to steal your face right off your head. Okay, okay. So, one, so we're starting on F. So he starts on the root. And remember, three and four, think about it. So we have three notes for the F arpeggio. One, F, A, C. Remember, that's our F major arpeggio. He could have gone. And I'm sure he has certain recordings, but he starts off low and climbs, which is beautiful. One, zero, three. So F. A, C, 1 on the low E, 0, 3 on the A string. So we just did the 3 beats of the F chord. Now the 4 beats of the A triad. These are all arpeggios Jerry's doing. So he goes, 0, start on the open A string, 4th fret of the A string, C sharp, and then, as if you were to play an A like this, or like this, however you play it. 2 and 2 on the D and the G. So. So. And that's why it's important to think of this part not in 7, but kind of like 3, 4, 4, 4, which is just a different way to look at 7. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then. So, that was our chords. The first one is F, A, then next we go to B minor. This is where it gets really interesting, guys. B minor. D minor. Bobby's doing. So Jerry kind of goes up on the first one and down on the second one a lot. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. And then... This is the part I always ball. I know the chords, but you know you can play it so many different ways. But I want to analyze the progression with you guys real quick. Be patient with me. Thank you. Like I said, who's ever watching, I can't see comments. Sorry. My phone's messed up, or apparently my Facebook's messed up. So, first of all, we had F to A, right? Let's figure out what that is. Those are not in the same key signature by any means. F and A minor, yeah, they work well together because they share two mutual notes. Uh, A and C. A and C is like, you don't know if it's going to be an F or a D minor 7 or A minor. See how many different chords can, you know, you can look at it so many different ways. But so we have F, then we go up. It's kind of like four steps to uh, A. And that's almost like the augmented thing. Diminished, there's only three of them. They go up by threes, but augmented chords go up by four. So, one, two, three of them. So he's going up like kind of augmented movement. F, A, now we're on B minor. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. So we had and then we're going to just go to this nine on the D, seven, seven, seven bar on the G, B, E. This shape. And go up it. Three, and then up to D minor. Down. So that's how I would practice it. Up three. So. And then we go down to A minor. G minor.
Sorry guys, I just I just get carried away with jamming, but so we have it's like a sequence. They definitely really thought this out. Um cli the climb into the solo cuz it leads perfectly back into G Mix Lydian. So the FA that's relatively normal. I almost don't think of that as the same part as when we go to these minors. So look at this. B minor to D minor. We're going up a minor third, which is three steps, three frets away. I've been messing around with those a lot lately. A lot of Boss and Nova music uh, goes up minor thirds a lot. So, um... B minor, all three frets to D minor, and the reason I'm going overboard and telling you this is because it's an easy way to logically think about it. I know the Grateful Dead isn't about logic always, but they definitely thought this out. Because look, we do B minor, then go up three to D minor, but then, you know how we started that B minor? We're going to go down to A minor. So here's the whole sequence, B minor, D minor. Then go down two from the initial B minor, A minor, to C sharp minor. So it's minor chord, up three frets, a minor third, then two below the first one, but then every set of two chords goes up a minor third, three frets. So like, watch. I'll try to show it as clear as possible. I like to play my minors like this, but not a lot of people do it like that. I'm a jazz cat, so excuse me. So, B minor, D minor. So we went up three, right? And then we go down two frets from that first B minor, A. A, A, three. And then up three again. One, two, three, four. And then G. flat minor, up three again, and then the end changes, F, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, cool, so, but I really wanna, I hope I didn't explain that confusingly, so let me write it down real quick. My mom's phone may die, but uh, I'm not too concerned. Okay. And guys, if you want tabs, let me know. I'm going to tab this out. Like I said, JDarks has a beautiful tab of it. I just don't like text tabs. I like the sheet music on it and the rhythms on it. And I just don't agree with some of his interpretation I hope I'm not starting beef right now because I love Jay Darks but like uh he listens to different shows than I do but I want to uh, add on to what he's done so give him credit I didn't do this one by ear except for the parts that I disagreed with like the the chorus Jerry fills um let me plug this phone in to make sure we don't run out of battery I can't read comments again. I'll say that for the uh, fifth time. Um, so I'll respond to comments after. Um, so let me write this down. Let me find a notebook. It's called the sequence. And let's talk about how Jerry uses lead sequences and how it relates to these chords. Okay, so a sequence. If we're playing Fire on the Mountain. <laughs> We did a sequence in B mixolydian. That's what that's in. A sequence is this. A mathematical kind of thing. Down four, up, then down four from that. So this is a sequence. Jerry does those all the time. I skipped one or two. And you can come up with your own. Instead of four, do three. But this is like a sequence harmonically instead of melodically because it's with chords. So I have a notebook here. And I have no... I had like... 
20 pens and pencils in my room the other day, and then when I need one, there's none. Just kidding, there are, like, you should see how many pencils I have, guys. It's actually pretty funny. These these are good books. Jazz likes for guitar, but can you see all these pencils? Yeah, check these books out. Um, I got a lot of cool books. Um, I recommend Modern Jazz Fusion. You can't really see it, but books is not the point. I'm just very stream of consciousness. I'm that guy who sends you 20 text messages instead of writing it all out at once. Because I don't want to have to look back and edit it. I like, w I like to speak what comes to my mind immediately and improvise all the time. Because you don't have a chance to lie. You, you, you're just truthful when you just let yourself be. And you don't overthink things. So, let's write these down. So... We have F, A, right? B minor, A minor, G minor, F minor, D minor, C minor, and then, um, okay, cool. Thank you guys for being patient. Um, just label these two, three, four. So five kind of sections to the transition that leads up to the climatic orgasmic solos that Jerry does. Okay, let me see if I can turn this. Let's look at this. Now, like I said, we go from the, uh, and men gonna light my way. So D minor goes to F, because D minor goes to F nicely, it's in the same key. But then this A is kind of out of nowhere, not in the key. Don't worry about that for now, I want you to worry about 2, 3, and 4. Look at the sequence. Well, let's look vertically first. B minor, A, G, and I did this purposely, see this dash? That means minor in case you don't know. I wanted to just show you in case you guys don't know. That's an F, my handwriting's horrible, but... So B minor, A minor, G minor, F minor. Down a whole step, down a whole step, down a whole step. Two frets. Two frets down, two frets down. And now horizontally. Up those minor thirds. B minor, up a minor third. Then we take B minor, go down a whole step. Up a minor third, down a whole step, up a minor third. So it's a sequence. It's like, and then this is the walk up. The F minor walk up, which I'll go over again. But does that make sense? Well, I can't read comments, so I wouldn't know if it makes sense. Hopefully it does. Um, Yeah. That's the goal right there. So look at it both ways. So B minor. So all these, let's, let's write it down. Going this way. um, Horizontally. It's up three frets. Which is a minor third interval or modulation. Right? But then when we go back and we go down, like kind of like vertically, x, y axis. See, why can't we do this kind of math in elementary school? We have down a whole step, which is two frets. Cool. Take a screenshot of this, guys, if you can. Let me just switch it this way. See if you can take a screenshot of that. And always message me with questions. Okay. So that's just to show you that they definitely really planned that out and thought that part out. Well, I mean, I don't know. I wasn't there. But there's a clear mathematical like algorithm formula that it follows. So Jerry's leads with it. Yep, I'm using the FG today instead of the uh, semi-hollow. Just fits the song better. Um, why do I have no volume? What did I do? Oh, I did this. Okay. So, one last thing to engrave in your brains. Think the rest of the song in 7-4 and count. You'll hear Mickey and Billy, one of them, and a lot of live takes count in the beginning. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven. So that's seven, four. But this transition, think three, four, then four, four, which equals seven, four. But it helps you think because we're supposed to do the f first chord three times in the second chord of each grouping. I know it's backwards, but three times, four times, three times, four times, three times, four times. So like F, two, three, A, two, three, four, and repeat that pattern. So we have, see even that, that goes to show you why you should think about it like that. Three, four. Three, four, Jerry arpeggiates the F with three notes. Then he arpeggiates the A with four notes. So three, four, or so three, four, and then four, four. So how does he arpeggiate this one? He does an A, open A. So remember we have one, zero, three on the A. F, A, C. And then open A, C sharp. So he goes right up to the major third. Fifth. A, or E, excuse me, then A. Zero, four, two, two. I can't always tell you the strings and the frets, but it's open A, fourth on the A, second on the D, second on the G string. Groups of four, and then here's where the fun part comes. So we go from the F and the A to the B minor. I like to go make the... Everything's based off of these shapes from now for these next uh, four parts after that. Taking a B minor bar chord and just playing the top of it. Seven, so we're at the seven, seven, nine, or nine, and seventh bar. So go up it. Up three notes from the bottom. D. So we hit this. We really don't hit that top E then. Nine, seven, six, seven, seven, nine. And then. And they do the same shape. Remember, we move it up three frets. 10, 10, 10, 12. Because remember, we have four there. Seven, four time signature. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. And remember, so we went up the minor third. Now, what do you, we do? Pause the video and tell me what happens next. So we went B minor to D minor. How's the sequence go um, vertically? Now we go to A, and down a whole step from our original B minor, and do the same thing. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, then to G minor. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. And then this is the... I said earlier I don't really know how to play it as well, but I figured it out. It's F sharp for three. Once again, a three and then four type seven four feel. One, two, three, and then two of this. One, two, three. So we're taking the F sharp minor. You can see they even continued that sequence. They went down from G B flat minor, then they went did the whole stop thing again. F. Add your index finger or your middle finger to the B string, second fret, and then add that pinky to the third fret. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Or you can even think of that as three, four, two, four, two, four. Because one, two, three, one, two, one, two. Solo. And uh, I think I covered the whole song. So that part, again, is... I might have not played that that correct those fours correctly. Let me try it again. So, uh, man, I really shouldn't sit down. You can't see the neck, but and Jerry does a lot of like. So, let's see. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, 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 one,
solo. So let me... Man, can I loop this for you guys? Let me get the looper set up to end this off. Man, I wish I could take questions, but I can't see the comments. Is there anything else in this song we're missing? Oh, yeah. So I was right. Um, When they jam... So there's the first solo they often do, at least in 77 a lot, where it's over the chorus, G mixolydian chords, and at the end, they jam an F sharp. And in the version that I love, 5, 13, 77, that's like the, the longest part of the song is the jam at the end. But instead of going back to F sharp minor or Aeolian mode, they go into F sharp Dorian mode. So the, the jam at the end is F sharp Dorian, which means instead of... Uh, one more time. I already explained this, but it's never repetition is never bad. Let me turn the Q-tron off. So what's our F minor scale? Remember that Aeolian just means normal minor. So we have diatonic scales and modes. Seven notes. Pentatonic, five notes. Prefixes. Penta, phi, dia, seven. Woo! Octagons. Stop signs. All of that cool stuff. So, um, now I don't know what I was talking about. Man, oh, yeah, F minor scale. So, the beginning of the song is in, like, F minor Aeolian. And if you didn't remember from the beginning of the video, tell me which note changes here. See if you can figure out. It's one note changes from Aeolian to Dorian mode. Here's Aeolian again. One, two. And here's Dorian. You catch that? Pause it and go back and see if you can if you're watching this later. But the six changes. So instead of an all minor scale now, we raise that three to that four. And it gives you a feeling of minor and it's the funk mode to me. This it's like this. more funk, Aeolian's more depressing, dark, melancholy, and it doesn't have to be, I'm just giving, throwing names out there, so, you want to improvise over the ending, F sharp Dorian, um, start off with this, you want to get out of that pentatonic box, well, I'll show you two ways, let's build off the pentatonic box, everyone knows, F sharp minor pentatonic, two five, two four, two four, two four, two five, two five. How do we make that Dorian? Well, we go two, four, five, two, four again. But on the next string, the D string, one, two, four. That's the note change there to Dorian. One, two, four. One, two, four. Two, four, five. Two, four, five. And that actually includes what I was going to show you. So, and Jerry does those sequences. Like, So practice Dorian, and uh, you don't need to use the full scale at first if you're just the beginning, just take notes and mess around with them. Let me get the loop set up and we'll end this off with me showing you how to solo over these progressions. I just need to find a cable, which is literally right next to me and perfect. These are lifesavers. And I'll show you this setup too in a second. I gotta plug this back in too. So we want this to go to the input. Is this in my guitar? Yes, it is. Man, oh man. So mono, mono. Don't worry, I don't have mono. I'm saying mono, not stereo. Okay. So, cool. Now is this plugged in is the question. And it is not is the answer. Let's plug it back in. I have a pedal board, but I'm not, like, I don't bring tons of pedals to shows just to be, like, like, look sick, bro. I just like to bring what I need. And lots of times, since I play a lot of jazz lately, I don't use pedals at all. But, uh, here, check it out. Um, flip the Now I got the Qtron, which if you're just tuning in, 
This is basically, it, from what I've heard, the same settings as, uh, or same schematics as Jerry's Mutron. These are the settings I have it on. If you move, move it to high pass, it sounds a little bit too tinny. And uh, band pass, and I, I don't know, you just gotta mess around with it. Why is it telling me to rotate my phone? Okay, cool. And this is just a simple looper. I plan to get a Boss RC30, but if you're just looking for a looper to just... The best way to practice stuff, guys, is either if you have an iPhone, voice memo the chords and practice sewing over it, but that can be tedious. So get a loop pedal, a cheap one like this. I don't like the word cheap. It's an inexpensive pedal. It does what it's supposed to do. You have, like, five minutes of loop time. Um, and... The other loop pedals, like the expensive ones, and this is the, I have the Ditto X2 looper. You can just get the normal Ditto. I wish I would have, because they have effects on here that, like, reverses and half speeds it. But it's very hard to use in, like, a like a live setting or uh, practicing. So get yourself a looper and practice like that. It's the best way. I'd say even better than jam tracks online. Either just jam right along to the dead songs or loop it with your looper. But uh, backing tracks are too, they lose the human feeling. A lot of them, I mean, and so does the loop kind of since it just repeats it, but it has your vibe too. Just, just ideas for practicing. Okay, so let's see if I can uh, do this a little bit. So let's see. Um, let's talk about the chorus soloing for since. That's like the hardest part. Um, let me make sure I got this all set up. Um, um, so I can't remember if the F end is F sharp, Dorian, and 7 4. I think it is. I'd assume it is. But, uh, Another way to think of F sharp Dorian, so I told you, think about it as a F sharp minor. But raise that six, so now we have a major sixth and minor. Or think about it as F sharp F sharp Dorian that he jams in is the same scale as the E major scale. So if you play the E major scale, so this right here. I just played the E major scale, but it doesn't sound like a major scale at all. That's what modes are. But the bad part about thinking about it is, oh, I can just play the E major scale. It's the same notes. You're going to want to go back to E as a home base. You want to think F sharp Dorian so you can end your licks here, or else it'll sound weird. So let's see here. Two, three, four. Whoa, wait, this is not giving me juice right now. What's up with this? Is it plugged in? It is plugged in. Hmm. Sorry guys, give me a second. Yeah, I don't know what's up with this. Maybe it's where it's at in the chain. Okay, give me a second, but, uh, here. Here, I'm gonna have to maybe unplug the Qtron to get this to work. Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, that's why. Ha, <laughs> it wasn't even plugged in. That's so funny. Okay. by Dave uh, Brubeck with uh, Paul Desmond on saxophone to get used to weird time signatures. Like I said in one of my other videos, Bob Weir says in the doc, he says in the doc he was inspired a lot by McCoy Tyner's comping behind John Coltrane, and that's why he likes random ass, not random, but weird chords. So, uh, yeah, cool.
Use your uh, so we're in G Mixolydian. So what are some soloing ideas? First of all, what is G Mixolydian? We talked about Mixolydian earlier, another mode. G Mixolydian is the C major scale, same exact notes, starting on G. Don't think about it as C major, or just, or do it if you want to, but not, just my advice. So, normal G major, 7th, G Mixolydian. That F gives us the F in the chorus. So we need the F. We don't want F sharp. So think about it. Major and minor are the two most commonly or like popular talked about scales. Major and minor. And their modes are major is Ionian, minor is Aeolian. Okay? We said Dorian is basically Aeolian minor with one note change. And now, Mixolydian is basically major or Ionian with one note change. So those are four modes you can get down really easily. There's only seven modes because we have a diatonic scale that has seven notes. So there's only seven modes. I don't jam in Phrygian and Lydian enough. Well, I do jam in Lydian a lot for jazz. You play it over major seventh chords. There's this book called Lydian Chromatic concept of tonal organization by George Russell where he proposes that uh, Lydian should be like the major scale instead of like how it's like our major scale now some weird thing he gets into math but if you go up fifths basically and keep going and going you end up with an F sharp in the key of C instead of F like if you were to build a chord off it so basically, check it out. It's a jazz kind of thing, but this dude suggests that the Lydian mode, which sounds like uh, this. This is Lydian. Oh, you know what's Lydian? Terrapin Station. Because there's a B in there. That B is not supposed to be in there. So a lot of the modes just change one note. The Lydian mode changes from the major Major is I only remember it just uh, raises the fourth, and basically this dude in the book says like okay if you go up fists and keep stacking them you get F sharp and not F, but but we love that that suspended resolution, so it's just all you know cool things to to look at and think about. So so what can we do to solo over this? We can solo and first of all I just I even just take this box. E minor pentatonic. The relative minor, so E minor pentatonic. That's G major pentatonic. Just start on this note, the 15, instead of, forget that initial 12. Throw it away. G major pentatonic. That's my foundation. Then what color notes can I add? So I have 5. here so instead of 12 15 12 15 on the E and the B we have 12 13 that's the mixolydian note the minor seventh so tw whoops 15 13 12 15 13 12 so here 15 13 12 15 13 12 14, 12, 15, 14, 12, and then uh, 15, 14, I'm sorry, I'm confusing myself, 15, 14, 12, that you can learn on your own, but this is a, this is a position Jerry plays a lot of them in, so 15, 12, 14, 15, 12, 14, 15, Mixolydian note, 12, 14, 12, 13, 15, 12, 13, 15. So use that, and then there's only three chords in it. G, C, and F are the only chords in the chorus. 
So try to arpeggiate them like Jerry would always do, or do guy tone lines. Guy tone lines means you look for the closest note in the next chord to the note you're on. If that makes sense. So if I'm playing a G major, and I'm on a B note in a solo, and I'm going to C, next, the C is right next to it. So that's like a guy tone line. Like Jerry loves those. Uh, my mentor at Wayne taught me about that. Arpeggio. I just did up the F. Watch. And then down the D. That's different between G major and G mixolydian is in G mixolydian we have F, G major, G Ionian, we have F sharp. So the best place to play this F, because other two chords, G and C, that could be in G major. The F chord is what makes it a mixolydian. Because if you're just doing this, G, C, that'd be fine to use the F sharp. We have an F, so try to land on, here's the Fs in that scale, 13 of the high E, 15 of the D string, and uh, if you want to get that low, 13 of the low E, but try to land on that when they land on the F chord, it's going to take a while because it's in 7-4 time, so it's easy to get thrown off, but what I did there is I arpeggiated F up here, like as if I were to play an F bar chord down here. Or just a triad. F, A, C, 3, 2, 1, D string, A, G, D string, G string, B string, up here. You just take it up an octave, which means remember 12 is our open. It's like we're open again. So, so I went up there since it goes F, C in the progression. And then I said, hey, there's C major chord right here. It's this one. So I play an octave higher, and then I hit the uh, major third, the root, and then the perfect fifth. Barred at the 17th fret. You can always just add or subtract 17 to figure out, or add or subtract 12 to figure out the octave. So add 12, octave up. So yeah, try to arpeggiate guide tone lines and be conscious of the chord changes in their notes. But the whole scale, if you just jam on the scale, it sounds good. That's after you get good with that. Whoops. arpeggios that time just to show you that you can get going without the arpeggios the thing arpeggios help a lot with is uh thinking outside of the box like it's because it's so easy to just go down the scale with licks right arpeggios force you to skip notes f uh skip g we have a skip uh b we have c so it forces you to do that but any note in the scale works. It's always an extension. So if we're playing G major, and even if we played the F on it, and it's not in the chord, and F is the um, dominant seventh, minor seventh of a G, or if we played E, which I actually recommended not to start on earlier, but if you play it up here, it sounds fine. It gives us this sound. A G6 chord, because G... A, B, C, D, E. It's the six in the scale. So what you're doing when you land on random notes is you're coloring the chords. The safest way to, to, to play chord changes or start off is hit the root note of every chord while you're soloing or the perfect fifth, like a power chord. 
the color tones, the ones you really want, like I said, are the major third, the minor third, the seventh, the ninth. The ninth is just the second note of the scale, an octave higher. Or uh, fourth, suspended four, six. They all sound good. And when you become conscious of what you're doing with it, it just starts to flow out. So let's see. One more jam on it, and I'll switch to the end part. Okay, so uh, what was I going to say about that? Yeah, one second, guys, one second. Give me one second. I think my, my family member's calling me. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Um... Someone's trying to sleep here, so I'm just trying to be respectable. I always ask them, but, uh, yeah, so they wanted me to just cool it a bit, but we're almost done. So now let's talk about soloing over the end in F, Dor F sharp Dorian really quick. Um, how can you do this? Get my strap straight, okay. Let's clear that loop, and let's just... Wait, let me listen real quick. Let me see if he solos in 7-4 at the end. That's kind of like I want to know that. I'm positive. Five. Let me go back a bit. Yeah, it's in 7-4 again at the end. So, oh, one more thing I wanted to add. So, you start off with the pentatonic scale I showed you. Penta means five notes. Then you add diatonic modes, major, minor, Dorian, Mixolydian. And then what I was doing there is chromatic notes, like Jerry does. So, don't limit yourself to seven notes. Use, you know all 12 notes or whatever so instead of just use notes that are in the scale Jerry does it all the time so just know that you can literally use any note and pentatonics are just really they're a great foundation but don't just use them they're only five notes when we can use um, seven more notes it's all about color so here's the end jam Let's see if I can loop it pretty nicely. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven.
quick recap and then we're all done. So hope you, if you have any questions, message me. I'm going to make tabs for this soon and update the description. They're all free, but if you'd like to donate to me, if you want, everything's free. Uh, I can put a link maybe in the comments, but I don't like being that guy. You don't have to donate me. Uh, it would just help me be able to do this more often. My, it's paypal.me slash bodeep. My name's Adam Bodeep. A-D-A-M-B-O-D-E-E-P. So paypal.me slash bodeep. And I will do like I did today. I'm doing this because someone donated 10 bucks. So I'm going to do what they want me to do. Because I appreciate that so much. I have a car that I just crashed. And I need to save up money. And uh, it's not a pity thing. Don't pity donate me or anything. Don't even donate me unless you really want to donate to me. Because I'm doing this for free as long as I can and as much as I can. But the more money I do have, the less shitty... I mean, I teach guitar lessons for a living. But I'd much rather do it in the comfort of my home with deadheads than teach these 12-year-old kids that aren't really into it Taylor Swift songs. So, you know... Throw some money my way if you're feeling it. Let's uh, let's go over what we have. I'm gonna play along with the song, okay? And then we're gonna be all done for this lesson. Jesus, I, I'm scared to see how long I went this time. Okay. Let's go along with it. F sharp minor behind the time. I think Bobby does that this part. And Jerry just kind of holds out that Mutron. Remember, it's just those three, 12 and 12, 10 and 10, and 9 and 8. Just figure out the rhythms on your own and the variation. Cameron, that's a Bobby thing. But that's why it's in minor in the beginning and not Dorian because there's that C instead of that uh, C sharp. Oh, I'm sorry, D instead of D sharp. And then arpeggios, Jerry. No, watch. He does arpeggios, not exactly like that always. Bobby's part, and then Jerry.
So those chords have been three times. And then what we talked about earlier. And let's get to the end and jam that section. Dorian. Remember sequences we talked about, ready? Fours. Whoops. Put in four groups of four and then down back up. Or the Jerry Classic. Five, four, three. Or maybe he just does this. I don't know. Cool. So, uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the lesson. I really gotta clean my room and do homework, but uh, next up is also the guy that donated 10 or 20 bucks wanted me to do Ramble on Rose, and I transcribed one of John Mayer's. I know some people in this group may not be a fan of Mayer, but uh, I dig him, and I transcribed, he posted an Instagram video of him playing Ramble on Rose, and I'll play a little snippet right here, but that's gonna be next, and solo ideas, so like... Let me just show you real quick. And, uh, yeah, check it out. Let me see if I can find it. Um, I have it all tabbed out. That's what I like to do. Cheat music, not like the J-Darks, just text, but the chords are also, if you can see, um, intro. It, it, it tells you everything, the chords, the notes, the key signature. Yep. Uh, so I hope you guys have a great night. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support... Um, just join the group, that's support enough, and if you want to donate, paypal.me slash b-o-d-e-e-p, bodeep, and, uh, yeah, we're gonna keep these rolling.